What's going on guys? In this video, I am going to show you how to pull live stock market data into Google Sheets. And then you could create something like this, or you could really go crazy with this and create full on portfolio trackers. I have a bunch of videos showing you exactly how to do that. But in today's video, we're just going to stick with the basics and how to pull stock data. Not going to do anything crazy here, but I'm going to show you exactly how I created this cool little stock analysis chart. We could change the ticker and all the data will update. So instead of XOM, which is Exxon Mobil, how about let's do ADP. We hit enter. Everything's loading. You can see everything updates. The chart updates. All of your data on the left updates. Instead of ADP, let's do how about CVX. Chevron Corporation, again, everything updates. So that's what I'm gonna show you how to do. It's very easy to do and it's a very powerful tool. So let's get right into it. So a nice clean sheet. So how are we actually pulling all of this data? We're actually pulling it from a function and the function is called Google Finance. You can see fetches securities information from Google Finance. So if we click on that, it's asking for a ticker. So let's type in a ticker How about the SPY. And then it's asking for an attribute. The attribute could be something like price. Everything has to be in quotations, at least when you're typing it in like this. So let's do that. Let's hit enter and see what happens. We get the price. There's the price of the S&P 500. And I just jumped on to Google Finance and you can see right here, the price is $405.31. So that's exactly what it says. So instead of SPY, let's change it to how about Apple? says it's $143.78. So let's try that out. Apple, $143.78. Good, so now we know it's working. Let's expand on that. Maybe we want more than just the price. What if we want a range of prices? As you can see the example it's giving us right here. So we got our ticker, we got our attribute. Now let's do start and end date. So we're going to hit comma, start date, how about 1-1-22, that's the start of the year. And again, everything needs to be in parentheses, which I keep forgetting to do. Comma, now end date. Well, how about today's date? So for me, that's open quotation, 5-26-2022. Dash close quotation, hit enter. And look at that, here's the date and every single close so far this year. But we could keep expanding on that. Let's do another comma, interval. So that was daily, what about weekly? Hit enter and look at that. Now we just have the weekly close of Apple. And then if we wanna create a candlestick chart, which I'm gonna show you how to do later, instead of price, we're gonna want all. So that gives us the date, the open, high, low, close, and the volume. So we're gonna use this later. And in fact, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this. We're gonna go into data two. I'm gonna paste it up here. We're gonna get rid of weekly, because I want daily. And we don't wanna go all the way back. We'll just do four, yeah, we'll do April to today. Hit enter. So here's all this, this is our data. I have it in data too. We'll get back to that in a minute, but let's keep working on this. So I'm gonna delete all of that. And now I'm gonna put into A1, we're gonna do Apple, okay? So we're gonna have Apple here and I'm gonna want the price. So how can I get the price over here? <clears throat> I'm gonna hit equals Google Finance. Now we don't have to actually type in Apple like this, because that could get tedious and annoying, especially when we're trying to build these more intricate portfolio trackers. So instead, we could just pull from a cell. So I'm going to click A1, which has Apple, comma, and then instead of typing in price, which could also be tedious, I'm going to pull from C2, uh, I mean from A2, which will be price. Hit enter, and then there we go. We got our price. So let me jump back over to here, and this is actually everything we could do. So I'm gonna copy that, go back to this sheet, paste all of that in, go up here, and for A1, I'm gonna do dollar sign, so then the A's will stick, well the A1, the first one will stick, 
And then if I drag this down, you can see this will change this one. We got A4, A3, and A2, but A1 is staying the same, which is Apple right here. And then if we change this instead of Apple, how about Microsoft? You can see these three fields load. So let's take this and drag it all the way down and we can pull the rest of the data. Now you don't have to memorize this because we can actually find this on the Google Finance function if we go to help. So if we go to Google Finance and then if you go down, it gives you this example, but if you keep scrolling and hit learn more, you could see that this pops up here. So this is the Google Finance function and if we keep scrolling, it'll show you all the different attributes that we could pull. So we got our price, price open, high, low, volume, pretty much everything you see here is what you will find here. Now the one annoying thing is we also have attributes for mutual funds, which is somewhat similar, but for some reason, mutual funds get the luxury of pulling income dividend. So you could get the dividend. You can't get that for stocks, unfortunately, with the Google Finance function, but I have videos showing you how to do that, how to pull it from Finviz or Yahoo Finance, which is a little bit harder, but it can be done. So you could check those videos out if you're interested in that. But this is going to show you all of the different attributes that you can pull from. We're going to X out of that and X out of that. And there's actually one attribute that is not mentioned that works. And that's what we're going to put up here. We're going to do equals Google Finance, Microsoft, comma, name. And then it will actually pull the name of the ticker. So it's Microsoft. Let's change it back to Apple. And there we go. It pulls Apple. How about LMK? Or no, it's LMT, Lockheed Martin, right there. So we're going to start to copy this. I want to go all the way to I. So we're going to grab this and we're just going to merge all those cells, make it bold, a font bigger, and then put that in the middle. And then we're going to change the text to white and then this to that blue. And then for LMT, we're also going to merge that. I'm going to do the same thing. Whoops. We're going to make the cell blue, the text white, bold, put that in the center. And then I'm actually going to want the rest of the price also in the center. So we're, we're going to be getting to making the candlesticks, which is really easy. But let me just fix this stuff. Dollar signs for that and dollar signs for these and the market cap. And then we'll widen that a little bit. Okay, good. That's just easier to read in my opinion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight all of this and I'm going to merge all of this. We're not going to be creating anything in this. We're actually going to be creating a chart from insert chart, but I like to keep that all one solid color and then remove the background for any of the charts. If we go back over here, this is just a chart, but I like to remove the background and then do that formatting wise. It just looks a lot cleaner, but let's get into that. How are we doing that? Well, we're going to go back to our data sheet and this is where we're going to be creating the candlestick chart. So we all know how charts are made. At least I hope we all know how charts are made. You highlight two cells, you go to insert, you go to chart and then boom, we got a nice little line chart of showing this is Apple. Yeah, right up here. This is Apple showing the current price. Nice and easy. We all understand that, but that's not what we want. We want a candlestick chart. So to do that, I'm actually going to delete that and we are going to highlight these first five rows. You do not want to highlight date, open, high, low, and close. You don't need to. You want to start here and I'm going to scroll down to where I have it or I could keep going if I end up wanting more days. If you want to look at the full year, you're going to want 365 days, but whatever. We're going to keep it like that and I'm going to go to insert chart. Uh, that does not look like a candlestick chart. That's because we need to select candlesticks. So we're going to go over here, scroll down, you're going to hit candlesticks and you're probably going to get an error message like that. Now, I don't know why, but I think it's the way that date is formatted. It doesn't work. So what you want to do before anything, we want to fix 
See how we have low, open, close, and high? These are in the wrong places. So you want to correct that. So we want low to be low, open to be open, close to be close, and then high to be high, and then hit aggregate, and then there we go. Starting to look like a candlestick chart, but something looks a little messed up. It's really hard to see. Well, that's because Google Finance, or at least the charting software, isn't smart enough to just kind of figure out where the range should be. So it's always going to start from zero. So you kind of need to tell it where to start from. And you can do this by saying, okay, our minimum, let's say is 100. And we could probably go higher than that. So how about 130? So there we go. Now we could see the chart better that way. But the problem with this, let's just X out of this really quick and drag this over here. When we go and instead of Apple, what if we were looking at Google, which the price is a lot higher, it kind of resets and then we're back in the wrong place again. You could hardly see what's going on. So what I've learned, which works for me, is if you just do log scale and then get rid of your mins and max, then it'll give you a clean chart like this. It's not going to show you the price, but that's okay because if we go back over here, here's the candlestick chart. We know what the price is. The price is $176. So we kind of know where it's at. And this is just more of showing you a trend where the price, you know, the past price really doesn't matter. It's nice to know it, but this is the best we could do in Google Sheets. It's, it's great, but it has its little imperfections. But now how do we bring this over to here? Well, the first thing I want to do is we don't want to be manually putting this in. So we're going to delete this and then we're going to jump over to stock analysis two. And this is in the way I want to hit sell one. So I'm just going to hit sell two and change a two to a one hit enter. And then there we go. Now we're pulling from stock analysis to a one, which is LMT. This is LMT's candlestick chart. So now we could clean this up a little. And by clean it up, I mean, we're going to delete the high and low. And then this is what I was talking about before. See the background color and background border. Let me actually, I'm going to copy this. So I'm going to click on the chart we made, hit control X, jump over here, hit control V. So now it's in place, but you see that ugly border. I don't like that. So that's why if we double click on it and I go to chart, not that one. Yeah, customize chart style. We're just gonna make that none and we're gonna make this none. And then we are good. We could get rid of date. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. So it just makes more of the chart, just the times and then the actual candlesticks. And then we could widen this out like that. So it fits in this little merged cell that we created. And that's pretty good. So now if we go up here and we type in something else like ADP, you're gonna see everything's gonna update. Let's type in XOM, everything updates. Even the name over here, see Exxon Mobil, all of this updates and then the chart updates. Now if you type in an ETF like the SPY, you're gonna be missing some data. It's not gonna be an average volume, a PE, EPS, beta, even though the SPY does have all that, but that's just another thing that Google Finance is lacking, the function at least. So you can see the Qs doesn't have a PE or EPS. It has a beta because the beta is the SPY. So it is kind of annoying how this won't show up. But again, it's not a perfect chart, but it is pretty cool how we could do all this. So here's Google. You can see everything updating. Google, its market cap is a little bit bigger. So let's do that. How about Target? There's Target. You can see the big drop with the candlestick. Or you could, so you know, okay, that must be where earnings was. But guys, this is just the beginning. This is pretty much what I'm going to leave you with. Check out my other videos. You could create super intricate portfolio trackers like this. You could get into some really neat details where you could look at what your account value is, the overall positions, your cash value, unrealized gains. We're pulling it all from 
this massive running ledger of all of your buy, sells, any kind of maybe dividends that you get, cash deposits, you name it. Or we could even create things like a stock market watch list like I have here. So you could really start to expand on it. But this is your basic introduction into exactly how to pull stock information into Google Finance. If you liked this video, guys, make sure to smash that like button. Check out the other videos. And as always, I will see you in the next one.